Welcome to the uh, three-hour intensive boot camp uh, today. Um, I use the word intensive for a reason. And not so much that it has to be physically intensive, which you know I can definitely uh, give you if I needed to, right? Uh, but more about the intensity I need you guys to actually put into the dance and understanding the dance. So when I use the word intensive, it's more about the understanding more than it is it's about physical. Make sense? Yeah. Okay? So I want everybody to write intensive. And then next to it, I want you to put in parentheses, mental. Okay? Now, everything that we're gonna talk about within this, this, this lecture period is gonna be focused about understanding mentally more about the dance and the different concepts that there are and that we're gonna focus on. So when I talk about concepts, you know, when I, when, 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 if you ever watch me dance, one of the things that you see you see a bunch of different concepts that I put to work constantly. Some that are second nature, some that, you know, uh, that might be new to me, because I'm always ever growing, just like I want for you. Yeah, I already put your seat over here. You can just sit that one down right there. Don't need to carry it no longer. Um, so I focus on a lot of concepts, all right? Now, when we talk about concepts, what are concepts? So the, the different, techniques that I use to create what I want to. The different techniques that I use to create what I want to. I hope y'all writing it down. Concept. Concepts. Techniques. Different techniques to use. Now the goal is, what I want for everybody here, and, and those that are not, is I want you guys to really master the dance. Not just learn it, but master it. New, first day, second day, 10 years, 20 years. I don't care. I need you to master it. So the focus is not about just coming in here and learning how to do some steps and then just go out and go dance. It's deeper than that. And when you treat it deeper than that, you'll do deeper. You'll go deeper. And so what I want for everybody to do today is go deeper from this day forward. Everybody paid their money, they came to this class, so you are invested in the knowledge that you're gonna to receive today. And the knowledge that you're gonna to continue to receive this day forward. So what I'm asking of you is to take it seriously. If you learn something, use it. Use it so much that you need to be able to automatically say, I don't need it or automatically be able to say, I need to put this into my dance more often. Because you're already used to it. I want you to get bored with your dance. And when I say bored, I'm not talking about bored, oh, I did it a couple times, okay, I'm ready to move to the next thing. I want you to be so overwhelmed with doing it so much. Something right now. Do not practice till you get it right. Practice until you can't get it wrong. Repeat it. Do not practice till you get it right. Practice until you cannot get it wrong. So what that means is don't just practice some and then once you get that to that point where, oh, I got it a couple times, okay, now nah, I'm good, I can move on and, and, and just focus on a whole bunch of other different things. I want you to really master that one thing so much that you can't mess it up. Like it's just, it's just too hard for you to do. See, one of the things about advanced dancers, because everybody in here is gonna become an advanced dancer and stepping, is that advanced dancers always wanna go back down to make whatever they missed, whatever cracks, whatever, anything, <coughs> always be able to fill them back in. So what I want you to think about is that right now your dance is a plan. And your plant, whether new or, or, or seasoned, your plant has grown to some, to some extent. The goal at this point now is to go back down to make sure that your soil has nutrition. Your soil is watered. And then what will happen is your plant will grow more. 
You don't just water the leaves. That's fine, but you have to water where they come from. So what that means, you always have to go back down to your basics to continue to make it better. If I can do it, and I'm considered a master in this dance, then you can definitely do it. And there's no excuse. <clears throat> Make sense? Cool? Now, there's a couple things that I want to go over when I talk about concepts. Give me one quick second. I need to turn on my Nancy Wilson playlist. All right. So there's a couple concepts that I want to go over today. Now, the one thing new again, new or old, because this this class is really for everybody. We're going to touch everything. Now. What I want everybody to understand is that the dance is not one way. There is no one way to do this dance. There is more than one way to do this dance. The other concept that I want you to keep in mind is that in order for you to know where to take your dance, you have to know where the dance come from. And so what I want everyone to do is understand the history of the dance. Start researching more. We're not going to be able to touch a lot on history today, but what I do want you to do is start researching the dance. If you want to be better at it, always go backwards. So you know what happened, what they do, and then now you know what to do from that point. So I want to make sure that everybody understands that this dance is not done in one way. The other concept I want you to put on your paper is that the eight count is not the real dance. Now, I know, you, I know you try to figure out, well, what do you mean? So this is what I mean by that. When I say the eight count is not the real dance, in the way that it is counted on a more um, traditional or universal level, I would say, is that it's counted using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? Which means that as the snare drum hits, which is considered the bottom beat of music, when that downbeat hits, that's when we're taking our steps. The problem with that is, it's gonna be hard to actually come out of that rhythm when you're dancing in such a monotonous rhythm. It's gonna be hard to be rhythmic. And so what you have to understand is the dance is technically done ahead and through the beat, and then behind it. So it's a through the beat dance, not the on the beat dance. Write that down. So it's a through the beat dance, not on the beat. Which means, as you hear that snare drum, as you hear that beat come, your step should already place the ground. At this point now, you are already ahead of your timing to be able to start dancing when the beat actually hits. Versus trying to put the foot down on the beat and trying to dance at the same time. I'm good, I'm not that good. That's too much work at one time. So instead, if you go and pay attention to more old school dancers, you'll see that they actually dance and place their, their feet, their ones, their fours, per the eight count, ahead of the beat versus on top. So if this is the beat here, they'll play here. And then they'll use their body to create movement. All right? So when, from the concept of the sixth count, the sixth count, is more originated. If you pay attention, the seven is a swing dance. Okay, it's part of the swing family. And just like majority of the swing dances, especially majority of people here do swing dances, such as IE, Swing Out, Houston Two Step, West Coast, are more often and usually and uh, uh, excuse my, my my mind just went blank. Um, naturally was taught with a six count using other concepts like uh, count concepts such as saying and or steps. One, two, and three, four, and five, six. One, two, three, and four, five, and six, right? 
Lindy Hop, which is like the grandfather of this dance. Great, great grandfather actually. Uses, his, uh, uses a six count concept to teach it. Now, granted, counting is just reference. So put that down as well. Counting is just reference. Now, if, I, if, if you ask me, can you tell me or show me the way to such and such? Okay? And I'll refer you to this route, right? You come back to me the next day and say, hey, can you refer me back to that again? And I do it again. And you come to me one more time, and I, I tell you the exact same thing. At some point, you won't need me as reference anymore, right? At some point, it'll start to stick, and you will no longer need me as that reference. Numbers are just a reference. You might use it once, you might use it twice. I'll give you a full year to use it. That's even too much to, for me to be totally honest. However, it's reference. <clears throat> At some point, you should be able to let it go and know and understand the patterns of your dance. So, what I want everybody to do is understand patterns. Kiki, uh, 12.50, can you uh, time me, please? So I want everybody to understand patterns. Now, let's go a little bit deeper. Everybody write discipline. Now, what's important about discipline is that you must have it in anything you want to master. So I'll give you a, just to kind of let you in a little bit on, on, on something I'm going through currently. Um, my name is Drury Alexander II, and I used to be 355 pounds, operating where I used to. I have been introduced to the concept of fasting. Not only for weight loss, but more off for the understanding of how to control one's mindset. Mm -hmm. Right? With that being the case, what comes with that, or what has to come with that, if I choose to succeed in it, is discipline. Would everybody agree? Yes. yes. Okay. Now, with discipline, I was able to do a five-day water fast this week where I was able to lose 15 pounds in one week. And I have officially reached my goal, my first goal, of being under 300 pounds. Yay! Thank you, thank you. Now, to transition that and segue into this is I need you to take the discipline and really put it to work in the day. Everybody came here to learn. To be honest, what we're doing right now, you probably won't get in too many places. Okay? And the reason why is because most people are just, and most people want to learn in a way of physical, but what you have to understand is mentally, when you're stimulated physically, you react. And you react the best way necessary. So mental stimulation, creates physical reaction. <laughs> All right. Are y'all with me today? Yep. 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 want to achieve. Let us talk about what that means in the dance. So I want you to write four bullet points. Okay. Now the first bullet point is going to be consistency. The 
the second bullet point is going to be weight exchange. The second one is going to be placement. Third. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, third. Placement. And the fourth one is going to be compression. And then you can put next to that resistance and tension. Welcome, welcome. Now, what we have to understand is that in the dance, all these things must apply in order for you to have great technique. All these things must apply. If you place your steps in the right place, that means, let me excuse me, if your weight exchange is correct, which means as you place your footing and your weight is where it needs to be, and so let's, let's touch on this, what it means to have good weight, uh, weight exchange. So when I talk about weight exchange, what that means is that to exchange weight fully, I need to have my shoulder, my hip, and my foot needs to all line up together. Okay? Shoulder, hip, and foot needs to all line up together. So that means if I say step back and you do this, that's not stepping back because your, your weight hasn't fully shifted. Even if you're like this and your heel is on the ground. Well, I'm, I got my foot down. I got my weight back there. No, because your shoulder is still forward. My hip and my foot might be together, but all three has to line up. This is a full weight exchange. All right? Now, in order for that to happen, so we have to have make sure that our placement is right. We have to make sure our weight exchange is right. And we have to make sure when we give and excuse me, when we exchange our proper placement correctly, it actually feeds our compression. So what that means is every time I shift my weight, naturally I'll give the compression, whether it be tension or resistance, whether it be push or pull in the concept. That means that at that point, now naturally I'm giving things that work versus I'm using my arm to just do a lot, but my feet are not doing anything. So for my guys, one of the biggest issues that I have with how I see a lot of you guys step nowadays is that y'all take less steps, which means y'all have to maneuver harder in your arms to create whatever you're lacking in your feet. It makes a big difference because now you're doing it unnaturally. But naturally, if you place your steps where they need to go, it'll automatically create the body language in your hands. Okay, uh, let's talk about really quickly uh, the tension or the compression, the resistance concept of it. The concept of push and pull sometimes become too literal. I say push, you, you shove. I say pull, you yank. <laughs> Not just leaders, followers too. And so the problem with this is now, again, you're using unnatural movement or unnatural motion to try to create something naturally. It don't work that way. So you have to make sure that as you're taking your steps and as you're maneuvering where you're supposed to, that you're giving what you need to, the necessary things. Let's talk about really quickly the weight exchange and placement. Placement is key. I want you to listen to something real quick. I wrote a couple of things. Soften your steps, and you will soften your approach. Soften your steps, and you will soften your approach. So what I mean by that is, in making sure that you understand how to correctly, or excuse me, not even just the word correctly, but more effectively, how to place your feet on the ground gives you a whole different way to maneuver into something that you're trying to go into. A whole different way that you're able to even communicate back to your partner in whatever shape, form, or fashion. A lot of times what tends to happen, hardness usually comes from speed or being fast. Softness usually comes from something that's being slow, okay? So if I hit the ground like that, that means I use speed into the ground or the lack of control of being able to slow it down and 
replace it. Now, listen to the approach. You didn't hear the second. This is the thing. Just in life, you got to move quiet. You have to move quiet. You got to be stealthy. When you dance, there was no reason why a guy 355 pounds could dance as if I was 50. There's no reason. Why is it a reason? It's not just about, it's not really science. It's just the, the approach that you take. So if you lighten your steps, no matter size, height, or anything, if you lighten your steps, you'll lighten your approach to how you go into things, which means things will become more patient. Write that word. That's a big one. Put that, put that in caps, like big, patience. Because if you don't understand how to have patience in the dance, then you're just going to run all over the place. You're going to run all over the place. You're going to feel like you always need to be somewhere. And there's never going to be a point in time where you're going to be like, ah. never going to be that time. Okay? So patience is a big deal. Now, earlier uh, we talked about um, talked about the counts. And so anybody that has been in my class or have been under my teaching in any way, shape, form, or fashion knows that I do a lot of manipulation. Manipulation based off what majority of the communities would probably be just kind of thrown off about. And usually that's because we're taught again with the universal eight count of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The problem with that is, if you look at any, any great dancer that you believe is great, like if you just look at them, I guarantee when you think about it, whoever that dancer is, somebody that's your idol that you look up to in the dance, that there is no way you see that rhythm in their dance. You don't see it. Who's the person you love to watch? Me. You. Yes, I'm sorry. You, I watch you. <laughs> do, do you see that rhythm in my dance? No, One, two, three. Four or no. five. You don't see that rhythm? And what about you? Same. Huh? The same. Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Lou, who's the person that you love to watch? That's a. That's, a, that's not you? That's not you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like watching Tick Man. Tick Man! Do you see that rhythm in his dance? No, not at all. Especially in his footwork. Especially in his footwork, right? Um, Iris, who's the person that you like to watch? And if you hear any names that you don't recognize, write them down. Victor James. Victor James, okay. Do you see that in his motion? Not consistently. Not consistently. Okay. What about you, Lee? Um, but, um, I like um, anything. I like oh. to watch your foot, Cheryl. Uh, okay. Your footwork. Um, yeah. Do you see no, that rhythm? No, not at all. In I'm still learning this class too. I don't watch anybody specifically. Nobody? <laughs> There's nobody. Not even. <laughs> 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 So I'm gonna pick out one that I that I know just in conversation that I know is uh Wakiba for those who might not know who's a student of mine. Uh, out of Detroit. And when you watch White People, do you yeah. see that? Do you see that no. account? No? Okay. I don't know why you was acting uh, like you just didn't say that. Now, with all that being said, yes. Spell it. Wakiba. <laughs> so wake B A. Wake W A K E B A. Yes. Tori. Now, when you watch her dance, do you see that rhythm? No, it's just fluid. You can't really tell. Exactly. Yeah. So, the question is, what separates you from them? What would you say that is? The count. The and. <laughs> <laughs> So all the things that you're already aware of, so all the things that you're already aware of that you still have not fixed, 
If you know what the difference is, then change it. What'd you say? How? That's a good question. That's a great question. You know, if I was, um, let's say I'm, I'm Drew, I'm the phenom, and I come and I say, hey, we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Where do you think you're going to go? Hmm? You're going to use that pattern. Why? Because that's been explained to me. I'm trying to break it. That's what you're being taught. Absolutely. It's what we're being taught. Now, this is not a bash to instructors, but we have to also take responsibility for the fact that in order for the, our communities to grow, we need to, for one, start to make changes to ourselves to help the community that we're trying to grow. Right. Makes sense, right? Yeah. And so, one of the things since being here in Dallas is that I chose to teach differently than how I taught in Detroit. I did that purposely. To the point that a lot of my Detroit people got very upset with me. <laughs> they got very upset with me because they said, how are you going to be teaching them all that new stuff? You ain't teach us none of that. Because when I moved, I elevated. And I didn't keep it from y'all. I just elevated to somewhere different mentally. So now that I've elevated to somewhere different mentally, now I can actually feed you. But guess what? Y'all wasn't ready for it anyway. Because even when I did come back and give it to you, y'all still fought it. Now, what's going to happen right now, before we get into the real nitty gritty, is that if you're learning something different, what's going to happen is that your muscle memory is going to fight you. But what I need for all of you to do is be ready for the fight. Be ready for the fight. All right. Uh, la, 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 la. I want everybody to write this down. Fully commit to the motion. Fully commit to the motion. Mistakes and all. I'm gonna stop right there real quick. If you mess up, embrace it. <laughs> the moment that you embrace the mistake will be the moment that you have learned from it. And if you know better, which you will, you won't do it again. Now, this is the deal when I say that. Is that it's human nature for us to um, make mistakes. It's part of learning. Right? But the one thing about human nature is that we don't fall the same way twice. We might have fell hard. We might, find, we might fall another way, just, just almost the same, but something's different because we learned from what happened before. So what I want you to take from that is I do not want you to dwell in the mistake. Embrace it. Embrace it and now use it and continue to go forth. Because I guarantee you that there's nothing stopping you from being better, even the mistakes that just happened. There's nothing. Hello, everyone. Good to see you. Family. Okay? There's nothing stopping you. So mistakes and all. There's no point in having something, excuse me, there's no point in dwelling in the past when the present presents progress for the future. Yep. There's no point in dwelling in the past. When the present presents progress for the future. You're just a 
smiling. So don't be coming here and uh, mess up the class being disruptive. It's always the family. <laughs> All right. So I want y'all. I want y'all to uh, to really take that, and I want you to to really think about that moving forward. The reason why I wanted you guys to take notes today, for one, it was gonna be something different. Y'all was really gonna be like notebooks, pens. What? <laughs> I came to dance. Of course you did. You came to learn though, which is the most important. But I really want you to be able to take this and, and go back and look at it. Start to create some affirmations for yourself with your dance. More than what you might have already created. Uh, based off where your dance is currently, for those who already have the base in the dance that they already have that's pre-existing, or those that are new, which is great, that means you're not tainted, with no craziness, no <laughs> But uh, you're new to the dance, which is awesome. I want you to keep this in mind. I'm gonna just say this, and then I'll go back and, and, and we, can, um, we can write it down, if you can remember. Sometimes the reason people do what they do is because they don't realize exactly what they do. Sometimes the reason people do what they do is because they don't realize exactly what they do or what they are doing. However, when people become knowledgeable about their movements, they become more conscious about their mistakes. However, when people become knowledgeable about their movements, they become conscious of their mistakes. All right? So a lot of times what tends to happen is we don't realize what we're doing when we're doing it because we just, we're just like, we're just doing it. There's no thought process, we're on autopilot, we just flow, and it's just what it is, what it is. A lot of times we do that with no thought process, okay? No thought process. Now, to be, for something to be second nature, it's usually no thought process anyway. So we can make things that's second nature bad habits, right? Bad habits can become second nature. But for one, the reason why a lot of times we create bad habits is because we're not knowledgeable of the other options that are available. So that goes back to the count concept that I was talking about before. Some of us are not knowledgeable about that there are other ways to do this dance versus the eight count that you were taught initially. All right? Which is why if you ever learned under me, you know that I hit a bunch, a range of different manipulations when it comes to the dance from a six count concept, which I've started doing more often because I originally learned on six count. And I'm trying to get back to that concept, isn't it? Why did they start teaching eight counts? Why did they start teaching eight counts? No, it's just that, uh, you know, somebody thought that they found a better answer. And it just became something that was easy for everyone to pick up more universally, or more on a universal scale. So therefore, it became a little bit more popular because it was a way to teach people how to take the steps easier. Um, however, as we progress and evolve, Although we've still created great dancers along the way, it is not the, the amount, the percentage of great dancers that we used to have that started to win. Now, I've been stepping 18 years, going on 19 now. I've been dancing 26. With that being said, in my time and what I've seen, I have seen that decrease in skill level, decrease in understanding decrease in dance, I've seen this drop. Which is why I'm so like all in with making sure that we get back. Everybody with me on that, right? Yeah. Okay, new and all. Yeah. I'm gonna keep messing with you. I see. But you're gonna think about this a year from now. All right. Okay. 
December 11, 2022, we're going to talk about this, all right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, oh, so there are a bunch of different manipulations. So we talked about the six count. Uh, we also have a concept, what I call the quick one, two, which is basically a single patient. So the concept now is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, versus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we have what I call your slow one, four, seven, which is basically dragging the one and the four. Rushing it, however, dragging it. So that means now my time is seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. For my faces of Houston people, we are very familiar with that count, right? <laughs> very familiar with that count, right? Oh, yeah. That was the count that I used when I went to when I went to Houston and was teaching constantly. That was what I introduced them to, and that's what we maintain. There are also other variations of being able to switch up. Uh, so I might do a quick one, two, with a slow four. And these are all manipulations. So the key thing is to have control is to be able to manipulate when you choose. To have control is the ability to manipulate when you choose. You cannot manipulate something you do not understand fully. You don't need to think you manipulate it. But really what's happening is that the dance is manipulating you. So you stay in this box that's comfortable because you really don't have the control to widen it. Stop. <laughs> okay? So, this is something that is really more for the leaders, but I'm also take this for the followers too. And this is a concept for numbers. It's not the number you think it is. It's not the number you think it is. What I mean by that is sometimes, depending on based off where your turns or depending on how you want to lead a particular thing, a lot of times we tend to think that, let's say, for instance, one is the beginning of everything. And that's not true. Right? And depending on what it is you're trying to do, you might make it like eight. So this is what I want you to remember. Where there's, where there is motion or the start of something, there was the initial motion of it. So what I mean by that is if there's a turn I need to do on one, my initiation started on eight. Not just on eight, because it's the other concept of what you keep in mind, there's always two parts to every number. There's not, there's not just one flat number. There's two parts to every number. Make that one o'clock, Kiki. <laughs> I know y'all came to sweat today. I'm going to make sure y'all sweat. Um, there's two parts to every number. Great dancers learn how to dance to the second part of everything. So when you can dance to the latter part of something versus the formal, what tends to happen at this point is that you have understood and have created patience for yourself. That you just don't fall just because the number started, but because the number is going and you choose when you want to move through it. And because you have patience and you can breathe through it, now you move when you want to, which a lot of times you move more on the latter side of it because it also helps present a certain type of look and style and finesse that adds to it in the process. So, it's not the number you think it is. Uh, da, 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 da. This is a concept really that's good for everybody, but I'm gonna use this more for my followers. Is that where you look is where you're going to go. Where you look is where you're gonna go. Look where the open space is. And it's really, for, like I said, for the leaders too. Look where the open space is. Better yet, look at where your partner is. I'm gonna stop right there. Y'all don't pay attention enough. 
Y'all don't pay attention enough. And when I say don't pay attention enough, you're not paying attention to where your partner is, how your partner's moving, what's happening in the, in, in the, in the midst of the motion, between weight exchanges, where you even are. Half the time, you're too busy worried about what's going on out there that you don't even know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn how to balance. That's the other part of control, is that knowing how to balance you and what you need to do and your partner and where they are and how they're moving. As a leader, that's very, very important because we dance for two. Just like a woman who's pregnant eats for two, we dance for two. So what that means is that you always have to consider not only yourself, but the person in front of you. But you can't focus too much on the person in front of you that you take away from yourself. Love everybody, but not more than yourself. First. Then you can give to others what they deserve from you. Where you look is where you're going, is where you're gonna go. Look where the open space is. Better yet, look at where your partner is, usually indicating where you might be going next. Patrice, come here quick. <laughs> I'm dancing, and I decide, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna move over here, okay? And my focus is what's going on over here. <laughs> and I'm not seeing where my partner is going or what's happening. I'm not able to be a, a protector. I'm not able to secure her, to keep from something happening to her. I'm no longer focused on her, so now I don't know where her placement really is. I know where mine is, but mine isn't, isn't just as important as hers. So I want to make sure that in my maneuver, I'm always watching where she's going. Now, once I've watched where she's going, then I might be able to look elsewhere. But the focus is always being able to watch where she's going, which will be able to tell me. And also, if you pay attention, put my body in a position that now I'm actually able to respond or give energy back to my partner. Versus me being like this, and now my focus is, is, is elsewhere. Now, I'm not speaking from the aspect of if you just in the moment and you're getting down and you know, and you give her a turn and then you kind of dance away and play around and do a little something to come back. But the key thing is, you're not gone too long, but at the same time, you still paid attention to where she went first before you actually went off on your own. So that's from a lead perspective. From a follow perspective, the concept is always watch your partner because through his body language will communicate his lead before his lead will actually tell you something. Lead is only confirmation. Body language actually tells the story. So before I actually tell her to come across the lane, my body language started maneuvering in a way that told her where she was going. My lead is just a follow through. So when I say my lead is a follow through, my motion here was what told her to go, but my motion in my hands is just a confirmation and follow through to make it more sharp and direct. So ladies, what I want you to take from that, followers, I want you to take from that is, pay attention to their body language, read their body language before trusting your feel. Thank you. A lot of times we focus too much on feel. Both men and women, but mainly, mainly the followers, you focus too much on feel. And what tends to happen is when we focus more on feel, we, sometimes we know our feelings be all over the place. Hmm. So when our feelings are all, all over the place, and it's human nature to second guess ourselves, now we've guessed ourselves out of something that could have been right, and guessed ourselves into something that was wrong. 
We're supposed to go left, but we went right, and vice versa. So instead, we need to focus on what we see. Seeing is believing. Write that down, that's, that's key. Seeing is believing. How this process is supposed to work is that you're supposed to see it, recognize the familiar sensation that seeing gave you. So recognize what that feel is by what you see. And after you have done this multiple times, like we talked about before, with reference and referral, after you have referred to that, that site for so much, so much, to the point where it becomes second nature, then you can actually stop looking. Because your body will be familiar with the sensation that it used to feel, that it's used to feeling. Which means you no longer need sight to confirm it. However, continuing to look is never a bad thing. But now you have the feeling and understand that familiar sensation. I got one more thing. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, yep, I see. okay. Everybody do me a favor. Take your right hand. And I want everybody to say, comb your hair. Comb, comb your hair. hair. I want everybody to do this. Okay? Now, I want everybody to say, <laughs> he was like, <laughs> <laughs> So call me here, right? Now this is the other concept I want you to keep in mind, is elbows below your chin. So to comb your hair does not require your arm to be up here to do that, hmm. right? Your arm doesn't have to be up here to do that. You comb your hair just like this, okay? Now, this is very important on both sides, not just from a follower's perspective, which ladies, I have, I, for, for some of you that I work with, you know that I've focused on this concept quite often, on being able to relax your arms when doing turns, especially, or just moves in general. And so what that means is that when you're constantly relaxing yourself, then you're constantly making yourself more ready and available. When you feel a lead, it should come from a relaxed state of you not from a timid or rigid state, which makes whatever he gave you just way more, just like, it's so much more pronounced that it's, it's crazy. So you exaggerate in whatever that reaction needs to be. So instead, what we need to do is make sure that you're always relaxed, and when you do things from a relaxed state of mind, or a relaxed body concept, then what they do now, what that does now, is that it helps create a softer approach, like we talked about earlier. So that means now you can react pretty much the way you want to, not how you have to. There's a difference. To say, I, I had to, I have to, which means you're not a controller. And even though you're given a turn, lady, doesn't mean that you have to do it a certain kind of way. It means that you have to be in control of how you go into it, so you can control how you want your side of that dance to look. All those guys do, all those leads do, is just create the power of suggestion. But we need you to stay in your flow and in your mode and be in your control for that to happen at its most effective and most efficient way. So, elbows below your chin, comb your hair. Turns are like the sun, they rise and they sit. So from ear to ear, a turn will start and will set at the other. A turn will start and finish at the other. When you dwell in your turn, that means you're no longer focused on what comes next. You're too busy focused on what's happening now. You have to learn how to look past what's happening now so you can start seeing where you need to go next. In the dance, you have to make sure that you are starting to look for the next part. Even as a leader, thank you. Even as a leader, okay? So we wanna make sure that as you're maneuvering through your dance, especially followers, is that look for your next part. Don't dwell in the turn. 
Every time that arm rests, now you can actually see the next thing. And if you're rested, if your arms are rested, they come back down to where their natural part of your body is, which elbows belong to the side part of your body. Once your arms relax, it actually makes you relax. Think about it. When you like this, are you relaxed? No. But as soon as you, and you drop your arms, that's where you become relaxed, right? And so when you're dancing, that doesn't mean that they have to stop. Just because you do a turn, your hand went up, and it has to come back down. Once you create that state of relaxation, then it creates the state of control. Once you have the state of control, then you can do whatever you want to, when you want to. You can do turns, you can think. Paint that right down. That's right. See that smoothivity shirt, bling bling. Bam. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, One other thing, really quickly, before we uh, uh, get up and get to rolling, because y'all gonna get this work today, is that what's important about the dance is that everyone is a part of it. That's what's important about it. You're a part of it. And in being a part of something, what is your contribution to it? If you don't know what your contribution to it is, then you probably have some work to do. And what I mean by contribution is that right now, everybody is here because you want to learn and you want to be better. You have invested time and money into, into learning something and becoming better at it. That's not the contribution, though. The contribution is not about you paying your money and just putting time to show it. But the contribution is, is how you can take the time and the money Invest it in what it is that you're learning. Implement it to the point where it's second nature, to the point where you don't do it till you get it right, but you do it till you can't get it wrong. And you actually make it look like it's supposed to. Doing where the dance, doing what the dance, doing the dance where it looks like it's supposed to from its purest standpoint and making it look amazing in the process. That is your contribution to the dance, is to evolve it and make it look better than it used to. That's what we have work to do. That's where our, that's where our contribution is. To get, learn the dance and learn it so well that we make the dance look better than it used to. Not taking away from where it came from, but making it better because that's the purpose of the next generation is to be better. There is no reason why everyone in here should not be a master of this dance. No reason at all. The only reason that that would not happen is because you got in your own way. Not because anybody else got in your way, because you got in your own way. So, I wanted to take this time and really talk to everybody and really put in perspective some different things and some different concepts. And we'll, I'll introduce some more concepts throughout the uh, remainder of class that'll be more physical concepts. But the biggest thing is I want you to really understand not only the dance, but what your role is in it. What is your role in the dance? What is your purpose? Everybody write purpose. And I want you to write that as big as possible. As a matter of fact, everybody stop. I want you to turn the page. <laughs> I want you to turn the book sideways. <laughs> and I want you to write purpose across the whole page. And then under it, if you have room, I want you to ask, what is mine? And I want you to put three question marks, not just one. Now, can we talk about purpose really quickly? I want this to be something that you think about outside of dance. What's your purpose? I'm gonna leave that there. Then I want you to transition over into dance. And then I want you to ask yourself, is, is everything that you do in the dance purposeful? 
You know, when I put my big toe on the ground, I do that for a reason. There's intent behind it. When I put my foot behind my left, there's intent behind it. When I raise my hand above my head to comb my hair, there's intent behind it. When I do a little twinkle twinkle on my heel right here, there's a purpose for it. Rick. Yo, when I high step, uh oh. 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 <laughs> and when I stomp the ground, yo, there's a purpose for it. Oh yeah. That's what's up. Okay. When I dance with my wife a certain kind of way, there's a purpose for it. Right? When I dance with my husband in any type of way, a certain kind of way, excuse me, there's a purpose for it. I had a little sway on this turn. There was a purpose for it. Everything I do, I understand the reason why I do it. If you do not understand the reason why you do the things you do, nine times 10 is because you're not knowledgeable about what it is that you do. But once you become knowledgeable, then you become conscious. Once you become conscious, now who's in control? All right, everybody. Push your seats back. Let's get to work. Let's get to work.